Hello, everybody. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. Today's topic is to grieve or not to grieve. I've noticed that when people think that they're depressed and they often will put a negative spin on it to begin with, they end up feeling bad for feeling sad. And, you know, the truth is you might actually not be depressed. I've seen people who are facing a difficult medical diagnosis and their ability to do things has actually gone down. And then they come to me and they say that they're depressed and they're already on antidepressants or something. But really, is that depression? You know, supposedly the definition, the clinical definition of depression is a sad affect, a, a ennui about life. You know, it's more about flatlining and not feeling anything. And it's supposedly clinical depression is just a brain imbalance or something. And it's not related to anything. But really, you know, maybe people will end up in that place because they're laying such a trip on themselves for feeling sad or for even grieving. Grief is the body's natural response to loss. So if you have lost anything, it can be, you know, it can be a job. Some people, when they finally retire, they've been CEO for so long, or they've been a school teacher for so long, or whatever, that suddenly the, their identity is in question, and they say, oh, I got depressed. But really, it is a response to loss, potentially a fruitful state to be in. It's a time for introspection to see, you know, who am I really? If I'm not that role, you know, one of the medical directors, former medical directors at Hippocrates, used to be a surgeon. And then he was in some kind of a car accident and injured his wrist, and he was then not able to do surgery. And I understand for a while he was very depressed until he got it together and realized, oh, I'm still a doctor. I've got all this skill, and I can still use my knowledge for good. I can still be of service and still make a living. Was there a loss involved? Yeah, I did extra schooling to be a surgeon. I also want to mention this again, but Sigmund Freud said that depression was anger turned inwards. And I've noticed that for some people who don't do anger well or easily or at all, they will tend to be depressed because it's not like the anger goes away because you don't do it consciously it goes in some people are so nice they'd rather hurt themselves than risk hurting somebody with their own anger and is that nice i mean i guess it is but biologically it's not nice it's not the right thing to do it's important to learn how to channel anger and express it appropriately without being hurtful you know what's that aa saying say what you mean without being mean. It's a great skill. <laughs> you know, I've noticed for myself, I think I used to be a melancholy kid. And I think in some ways I'm still sort of a melancholy person. You know, I like the quiet times. I like the I like the alone times. I even like like this low level of sadness somehow. It, I mix it with compassion for humanity and feel a little sorry for myself. But it is a melancholy temperament in a way. And even that's not depression. That's just some... Uh, I'm so used to that as how to access my inner life that I've almost come to equate my inner life with this sad space, which I now know is just not true. I've just historically filled that space with sadness. And I don't want to be sad anymore. I don't need to be that sad to stay in touch with my self. You know, there's a book by Judith Somebody. It's called Necessary Losses because she rightfully points out in her work that loss is inevitable because we're in the world where things don't last. We're in this world where we age and lose certain skill sets that we had when we were younger. 
certain abilities and we lose our innocence for sure. So this is a place where there is a healthy room to make healthy room for for melancholy, for that appropriate acknowledgement of the losses that come with being a human being. That's not necessarily depression. It is a sacred space. It is part of the temple, one of the rooms in the human temple where we get to contemplate our condition and be sober. You know, some people don't let themselves feel sad at all. They'll overexcite themselves, overstimulate, get overinvolved, and, uh, you know, rock till they drop and never face that quietude. And that's not healthy. That's not good. So I'm saying cultivate a healthy respect for that sad part that actually is an acknowledgement of the necessary losses that we go through. One day we will all leave. We will each leave this world. You know, that's a very sobering reality. And it, to the degree that I'm not living my life fully and telling everybody that I love that I love them, that can add up to regret. And that's sad. You know, that's sad. And I've said this before, I don't want to wait till somebody's memorial service before I say sweet and wonderful and loving, kind things about them that I somehow wish I would have done while they were alive. No, I'm alive and you're alive and I choose to do that now. And I don't want you to wait until my memorial service to say what if, you know, whatever you feel about me. So I like that kind of engagement. And is some of that going to be melancholy? Probably. You know, I have two ex-wives. And of course I'm sad about how it didn't work out with each of them. I'm still in touch with both of them and there's a lot of love there. It's a lot of love. We didn't pick each other by accident and I'm not sorry for any of it. Except the part where I got hurt and hurt hurt them, of course. But I'm not sorry for the involvement. No, no, no. It does come down to just getting real and living real. That's my choice. Okay. Peace out. Love you.